Good luck. All right, so let's, um, what opening shall we play today? Let's play a static rook opening. Okay, our opponent likewise plays static rook. Um, let's fight back against this before it overwhelms us. Okay. I keep seeing that it's possible for me to bring this silver up. I don't really understand why. Um, but I see a lot of players do that, but I think that's a different category of position than this here. I think here it makes more sense for me to pressure my opponent into exchanging these pieces. And if that doesn't happen... Then I don't know. We're in the great unknown. If I push this, if they take, if I take, they do the same tactic against me. That's not perfect. Uh, if I do this bishop exchange here and then drop a bishop, the silver moves up quickly. Um... I think the main line here is just normal bishop exchange, Shoseki. Um, so I'm not the world's leading expert on this. Um, I think it goes something like that, though. And then if I push this, if they take rook takes, the, uh, we could enter this entire class of positions that I'm not super familiar with. Or, I just move this silver to defend my center pawn. I think things are okay, even if they try the same Joseki against me. Somehow I think... I think there's going to be tactics that justify this. And if there aren't, we're going to learn something from having played this game. So, yeah, my bishop's head is attacked. I need to attend to this, and so I do attend to it. But I thought that if I pushed my pawn here, and then I'm threatening a pawn drop over there, I thought that's good for me. But maybe that's not the case. Um, also, I don't think they're really threatening to take this, because I have a pawn drop over here. So, whatever the case, I think it best that I activate my rook. Now I have the option to drop a pawn here, sacking a pawn, which doesn't seem to gain anything. In other lines, it's convincing, but here I'm not so sure. Um... So here we are at the symmetric position, uh, minus my silver advance. And I did not see what a good move for me in this position minus a silver advance would have been. So I've basically given them Senta, but um, yeah, I don't know how to play this. So I'm hoping to learn something from this game. Ah, if the rook takes, you now you do have a point that uh, bishop exchange threat um, undermines both of these pieces. Um, hmm. So unless my king fights back here directly, which is risky because they have this drop. I'm not sure what else to do. I don't want to block my bishop at all. If I take this bishop, 
Rook takes, silver takes, pawn drop over here somewhere. Uh, they can return. No, they can't do rook takes bishop in return, but they'll have a rook to drop over here. Hmm. Um. Wait, now if I take this and then I drop here, I have an attack on their king. That's really fast. I'm also threatening this promotion, so the rook might go back here. There might be other tactics. <sighs> My rook is not super great here. If I exchange bishops, and then I do a bishop drop, is that not just as good? It's effectively the same thing. Except I'm giving them a bishop instead of a rook. Um, yeah, their rook attacks my bishop. I sack my rook here. They take my rook. I take here. I've got a silver in hand. Um, hmm. Oh wait, I can hit the rook directly here. They can't protect this pawn. Except for their gold, but I could lure the gold away by sacking my rook. This would not be dissimilar to what we looked at this morning. Um, there might be also other ways about this. Yeah, I think this is what I should do here. And I don't know whether I should drop a pawn before doing this crazy set of tactics, but I don't think so. I think I should just drop my bishop. Um, if I drop a pawn, the silver moves up. That's not so easy to understand. I could also drop a pawn here, then they drop a pawn and like my attack is gone. Um, strange. All right, well, I feel compelled to do this. I don't know if it's accurate. It's risky for sure. Uh, I also have a bishop drop here, and I can just take this and not worry about the rook at all. Because if I try to chase the rook, there are tactics, but I think these all favor me. Like, if I drop my bishop, if they use their bishop to protect this, I exchange there, and then I drop a rook here, forking gold, or for bishop and... Um, gold. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I hope I'm playing this accurately. What I've missed is that they could drop a rook to defend this rook, and then I don't have this fork here. Um, I could also drop it here. They could also just move the rook aside and let me promote here. Somehow I regarded my own threat as being enormous. Maybe I'm overrating my own threat. Also, they have this rook move.
man. I am having second thoughts. So I sacrificed a rook for a silver. And while wow, this builds an enormous initiative and it's I'm ha well it builds an initiative. It's not an enormous one, is it? Um I was more concerned about these lines where the rook takes my knight. Yeah, I don't know. I have this pawn drop idea, which maybe I should throw in at some point just to split this shape up. On the other hand, the silver might be more effective up the board as opposed to where it's currently located. So, Shogi's hard. But no, they're going to move the rook somewhere, and I might be in the universe of trouble here. Or they're going to use a rook to protect a rook, and I still haven't figured that out. How can they? They'd have to, like, drop it here or something. Um, then if I take here, I don't have a mate threat. Alright, they sacrifice the rook. Um, so unless I've got something devastating, I have to take this. I see. So yeah, they, well, I have to take this. If they drop a rook, I can trap it rather than losing my gold. Um... Yeah, if I, I can't bait this gold upward. If I use a pawn drop, they'll just move it aside, and, like, they don't have to take my bait. Um, my bishop is capable of promoting on two squares, unless somehow they protect both of those squares. But they have a rook drop forking. No, but then I could retreat. Or I could drop a silver. And if they take my bishop, I take back and I have a second rook. If I retreat, they drop a pawn. I retreat again. They could drop a rook, and like this falls, so I can't exactly run from that fork. Um, if they drop a rook here, maybe I can take here, threatening a rook drop. But then they drop a gold. I drop a rook, they drop a, they've already dropped their rook, they could drop a bishop. Um, yeah, I can't sack for mate there. I don't have enough. They have too many, oh, they could even drop a pawn to block this. Yeah, they have too many defensive pieces. I can't mate their king in the center of the board. Whereas I spent the tempo moving a silver up, so I've got I've controlled up here, but I've got weaknesses behind. And weaknesses if my king has to move, then this gold is not protected. So, yeah, given a free tempo, moving this gold over would solidify my shape. Um... but I'm not getting a free tempo here.
Okay, say they do protect this. If I promote my bishop the other way, they could drop a rook, and that's a fork. Um, and yeah, I don't have any... Well, maybe I have something convincing. But no, if the silver moves up, I'd have to retreat. Yeah, this fork is maybe less convincing than my own attacks. Maybe. My king is, like, surrounded by my own generals here. So another shape that could solidify things would be bringing the gold up in front of my king. Um, which I probably also don't have time for. Putting a pawn behind my silver would actually shore this up a bit. It's a very sad shape, but um, might save my butt. Okay, so against this, I was thinking other moves don't work, probably, so I need to drop a silver here. Uh, this gives them a bishop. They, they don't have another rook, so they don't have like a rook fork after that. <sighs> the main question in my mind was, can I take this pawn and expect to live? The answer is no. So, if I retreat, they drop stuff in my face, everything collapses. That doesn't work either. If I promote this way, the silver moves up, and I don't have time to protect this. So, yeah, I my decision is forced here. I have to do this, breaking up the fork and attacking their rook. So this shuts down my bishop's ability to make any kind of mate threat in the short term in exchange for me living. So, yeah. I think that was necessary. Granted, this corner is quite weak now. Um, but, oh, I guess another thing I could and should have considered was bring the knight up. Um, it probably fails, but there's some chance it doesn't. If it doesn't fail, then that would have allowed me to have one more silver that I could use to attack later. And the knight would be useful to attack toward the king. But likely they would just drop things somehow to break up the shape. I don't know how, but yeah, this... I should have considered the knight move. I didn't consider it. I mean, another idea would be like a bishop drop hitting the knight and that renews the threat. And sure, I could block somehow to get my king out of this pin, but it's not easy. Perhaps they only saw the knight move. Either here they're deciding between retreating the rook, or yeah, some kind of forcing move. Either taking my bishop or checking me somehow. That's a forcing move. That establishes a mate in one threat, which I probably need to respond to. Um, 
So I could retreat my silver to protect my king, or I could move this gold up. In general, moving the gold up is a weak shape. And this silver is floating anyway. If I retreat the silver, then if they drop a bishop, can I survive? Uh, rather, if they take my bishop and then drop it, can I survive that attack? I think so. If I can survive, the silver retreat is the safest way to do it. Um... Also possible might be just dropping the rook. But again, the silver's just floating out there, not doing anything. Dropping the rook would be sad. Um, moving up the gold, they promote their bishop, the silver hangs. Um, not sure what to think of that. I'm not sure I have to think about it, because the silver retreat looks pretty decent. But moving up the gold gives my king some breathing room until they drop their other gold, but then I can fork these golds. <sighs> Jeez, this is not easy. Um, also, I could move up the silver, which seems to cover everything. Covers the mate threat, covers the promotion threat. There might be some third threat I've missed, but um, it's got me a bit paranoid at this point. What can they do that I've not seen? It also clears the way for me to drop a rook, but they might drop a gold behind my silver. Um, yeah, that's risky. They drop a gold. They've dropped all their metal pieces. If I attack here, um, they don't have any pieces to interpose with. If I advance gold drop, if I take here, they run. Or no, they could bring this gold up. But I could check. King runs. Uh, if I take the rook, they've got mate threats. Okay, so if I bring up the silver, and then I move up this gold, I've made a very weak shape. But I have mating chances. I have an attack. If I move up the silver, they drop this. If I bring this up, they might bring their gold over to stop my attack. Um, hmm. Then I take the rook. If I bring up the silver, they take my bishop. They drop the bishop here, threatening mate in one. Um bring this up and they take my silver, I take back. My king gets surrounded. Basically, if I get greedy and try to ensnare this bishop, I get screwed. Um... So it's a question, do I bring this gold up to try to survive this, which gives away a silver and makes it... No. No, I try to survive in the center of the board. Hopefully, I survive that. Um, there's probably variations I missed. One thing I didn't see until now is that moving the silver incidentally allows me to threaten a rook drop. I'm trying to exchange my rook for a bishop, 
but then their gold ends up here, but then I can drop a bishop forking a gold into gold, but then probably they've got a rook drop somewhere that's just as convincing. Okay. This is what we've been leading up to, so let's see it. Okay, that's a fork. Um, now they have multiple pieces attacking this. I can bring my bish uh, gold up as previously suggested, which seems to fight back adequately. I could drop a pawn. I take this. Is it better for me to move the gold away? Or to drop a pawn. Or to drop a rook. If I drop a rook, I get mated. If I drop a pawn, they take the pawn, I get mated. Let's play the move that doesn't immediately result in me getting checkmated. There we go. I can play good moves sometimes. So next, their horse, and oh, they will be able to use the horse. To, no, they can't, because the rook defends this this point, which they used to use the. Um, yeah, they wouldn't be able to move the horse here to defend that, nor here on account of this rook. So I would be able to collect a gold here, but they'd get my silver. But we're probably not going that way. They probably have some other idea, like a gold drop on this side somewhere. But then we ensnare a horse. Yeah, or that. Now if I drop... Um, I'm not sure. They're threatening a knight. Um, if I drop a pawn, they take here directly. Interesting. There are a lot of tactics here. Sanjubi I think this is the best response. It threatens the silver retreat. Um, as well as this gold.
Oh, they might also be threatening things on this side. Okay. This defends the gold general. So this threatens to promote my rook. So that one's a knight. This also threatens the soul retreat. Silver retreat might be the most effective of all these threats. Actually, no, taking this bishop here would allow me to take this gold. So, but yeah, the silver retreat is probably Thank still you, the yo. best of all the threats. Since this bishop's pinned to the other bishop. But they might take... Now, if they take this here, I get that. I take my knight. Oh, I could also take this gold and then take that. Or vice versa. No, I want one more piece. If I go here, they take this. I take that, they trap my rook. It's okay. If I retreat, I take, I take, they take my lance. No, I'm still set there. Hmm. I think this is best. Been looking at it for several moves now. If there's something I've missed, I'm probably not seeing it. Or I'm not capable of seeing it right now. Alright, so... They have a knight. I didn't expect the knight to come into play right now. Sure, they could do this bishop takes, but then I take here, and I've got multiple threats. Interesting. I don't get it. I 
do not understand. Okay, this is a way for them to win a tempo. I accept. Sanju 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 Dio Yonju Dio. I don't understand what they're doing. Goju Dio Ich Ni Sang Shi Go Lok Shi Hat. Sanju Dio Yonju Dio This looks decisive. Hmm. 
Or rather, I'm embarrassed I've not figured this out yet. So... If the silver moves up, I have a force checkmate. If they add more pieces to their castle, I can still attack from the front. Um, or I could take this lance. I've been debating taking here. Hmm. If I tick here, king takes, I drop, king runs, check, king continues running. Now if I check from this side, though, there's not anywhere to run. There's just nowhere to run here. Maybe I've overestimated my attack? I don't know. Shogi's hard. <laughs> Shogi is a difficult game. I got very excited. I should not have played this so hurriedly. Alright. What the hell do we do now? Um, I have a gold general, but it's not. I don't know. I have no freaking clue what to do here. ]三十秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。秒。
No, don't play it yet. Work check is mate, right? I better get this correct this time. Thanks for the game. That was a tense game, <laughs> in case it's not readily apparent. Uh, my apologies for the headache and heartache we caused everyone that game. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was exciting. <laughs> okay. Oh my. So. Uh, I guess we should. <laughs> uh, I suppose let's analyze from the beginning. That's what Hidechi recommends, right? I know. Oh, that end game was something. That was something going on that end game, but, um, but and I didn't even need the silver to pull this off. So, um, oh, should have blocked with the rant lance instead of running. Uh, yeah, probably. That other guy could have moved his rook instead of sacrificing it. And basically turned the game into a double-edged game. Yeah, when they did that fork and I interposed my silver in the fork, they didn't have to sacrifice the rook. Sometime thereabouts. Now, it is actually quite late in Germany, so I completely understand if they don't want to post-game and analyze on this. Even though this is the teaching letter, I completely get it. Uh, or, yeah, we just have to be patient and we'll have a chance to do analysis. That's cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, after I sacrifice a dragon, that's not the greatest time for me to be thinking, is this really made or not? Um, so, yeah, it would have been far better for me to spend my time think about things, not get anxious about it. Um, but, yeah, there's we're all human. Yeah, I made at least one strategic error there, uh, playing much faster than necessary. And now thinking back upon it, if this Dragon 3-1 was always available, and I think it was, then, yeah, my taking the silver was pointless here. Um, so, we'll eventually get to the end game, but it would be nice to analyze from the beginning, because Hidechi recommends things that way. And I like Hidechi's explanation for why you would do that. It's because both players are very attached to what just transpired. And if players just analyze the end game every game, 
Well, those are difficult to repeat. It's not like chess where you get the same fundamental endgames time and time again. Um, so endgames tend to be pretty nuanced. So it makes sense to um, study all the game phases, not just the end game. Um, that said, if you see a mate, and if you're not just faking it, but you actually see all of it, um, then sitting doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, you don't have to wait the entire time. If you see the entire game through, in all variations to the end. Or if you are absolutely certain you're not going to get checkmated for what you do, uh, but see a way to win, then that's fine. So, yeah, our opponent basically turned this into a double-edged game. We saw once I got both rooks, um, even... I thought they were going to drop a silver to tr have four generals surrounding their king. And that would have been a complex position, and we'll get there eventually. Um, so, yeah, we've got to wait a minute. Um, I did try playing a static rook opening this time. Our opponent also opened with a static rook, which led to my first discovery. That right-hand fourth file rook perhaps is not easily playable against everything. Um, so yeah, that's worth noting. We, I think we did transpose into something similar to a bishop exchange. Hmm. Anyway, I'm trying to work my way through the game without moving the pieces or showing my opponent that I've moved away from the game board, but... Yeah, we'll get to analyzing this together in just a minute. So hopefully you guys can hang on a bit. Yeah, I'm guessing... Um, yeah, these groceries didn't either... Well, who knows where groceries came from, whether it was somebody at the residence or some service person that ran out and brought them. But either way, I can relate to that. You're just in the middle of fighting your favorite boss in the video game, and then you got chores to do. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, let's, uh, I guess, take a look from the top, shall we? Uh, cool. That was, and here they were fighting for one rating point this game. Um, so, yeah, they're uh, the study host. It's tradition to allow, if they so choose, they have the tradition of being able to yeah, uh, analyze the game from their perspective. Um, um, sure. Cool. Uh, do you prefer to lead or have me? Okay, cool. Yeah, so. Yeah, this, we got into something that was kind of like a bishop exchange. Um, but yeah, I burned a tempo and uh, perhaps that was severely unwise. Uh, Yeah, this got really... <laughs> yeah, I trapped my own king. Um, so there's pluses and minuses to that. Um, yeah, this is, I guess, a side pawn picker, which I'm not super familiar with. Um, and maybe this is the point where... Yeah, we're transported is suggesting the rook sack is a bit risky. Um, so 
So just because I'm attacking this um, doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Um, so... I don't... I'm not the world's leading expert on this, but there's like this and this, I guess. Or maybe even something like that. Was the plan to play side pawn picker from the start? Um, uh, no, definitely not. I'm not the world's leading expert on this at all. Uh, yeah, so their king could just escape. So yeah, my attack idea is um, not so substantial. Uh, I would have been better to push the edge pawn. Oh. So, yeah, this is to say that... Um, uh, yeah, the silver wall is pretty bad. I'm not sure necessarily what pushing the edge pawn gains us, but it doesn't lose, like... Uh, the same way that the silver ball does. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... If I push pawn 9-6, that would aid me in going for double side pawn picker. Oh. So there is theory there. And eventually be able to get a pawn in hand, etc. Okay. Uh, pawn or would help in the night escape and the mirror line. Okay, that's cool. Or I'm sorry, they're saying pawn nine six, not pawn one six. Um, sorry if I over blew the mic. Uh, unsure about rook seven nine here. Seven nine. So there is like rook seven nine and then this silver drop. Um, it's pretty sharp, I think, but not yeah, I don't know what it gains. I still have my bishop attacking two promotion squares. And probably I'll end up moving my gold one direction or the other, or somehow make an escape square for my king. Um, I'm assuming that running the king up and taking the rook somehow just doesn't work. But maybe it does work. If I try to play this... Okay. Uh, it says I'm studying a branch. Oh, sorry. They had some ideas here too. Okay, so they're suggesting this bishop drop. Um, interesting. So, uh, how combative can I get here? Can I get away with this, maybe? Like, if I'm playing the craziest moves, what happens? I might be interested in the bishop drop four or five side pawn line. Yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah, this gives me something for further exploration. Because as we approach this opening, somehow it didn't feel as scary as side pawn picker just feels in general. Like, once we're into it, it's not so terrifying. Other than the sense of dread that I might have forgotten something critical. Um, like this gold drop right next to there. Um, 
Or I guess they have a silver drop, and yeah, it's... I don't know that I hold this. Um, yeah, probably my position collapses. I can't just move this. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so that probably works well for them. At least if I play this extremely combative way. So instead, maybe I have to drop something like this and not try to force exchanges. Um, maybe this has a better result. Yeah, it could be. It could be that blocking there is good enough. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure how they attack from here. Like, one idea is a spawn drop on the knight's head, which might be why pawn 1-6 has some merit. Oh, now I see. Pawn 9-6 would prevent this bishop check out there. Yeah, so this attacks... Okay, my gold is not supported. So they're threatening to take my silver, and I have no response. Uh, unless I've got something really tricky. Um, yeah, I don't know. My gold is hanging. Hmm. So, yeah, this looks difficult. Um, I mean, I have a check, but it doesn't seem to go very far. Maybe rook 5-8. So, I'll work 5-8 here. Yes, that'd be the correct 5-8. Um, maybe. Yes, yeah, so this is what I was looking at. And then Rook takes... Um, is Rook takes playable here? And then... Oh, this doesn't gain anything. Never mind. Um... Hmm. Yeah. Uh, this might be the best way to go. That said, uh, like, I think Gota has a very, very nice position here. Um... Like, this seems very difficult to survive because I've trapped my king. I might have to unbury it somehow with, like, something like this. Hmm. I guess, yeah, the bishop four or five lines are much more difficult. Huh. Who you knew? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I just don't have a sense of danger. But we kind of knew that already. This being me and all. Um, so, yeah, that's a way to continue. Um, Yes, that was a cool rook sack that just breaks up my castle. I, I didn't see anything better. Uh, okay, we've got a Lee Shogi study.
can I copy this link? Can I open the link in a new tab? Yeah, let's do that. Let me refresh this and it loads up. I see. So this is um, our game that we just played as a Li Shogi study. And there's variations on it. Fair enough. Yeah, that's certainly one way to look at it. Um, <laughs> 81 Dojo post-game analysis uh, works if mere mortals have ideas. Um, I guess... Yeah, I don't know if... Not sure. If we're pressed for time, yeah, definitely that's possible. Uh, okay. Cool. Cool story, bro. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Cool. So they did this analysis. We can see spoilers on what the game graph looked like. So, there's the game graph. Mistakes happened. Anonymous made five blunders, two mistakes, and four inaccuracies, and also made four blunders, two mistakes, and six inaccuracies in the span of, of 60 moves. With an average sun upon loss of a silver. All right. Um, for Hidechi, yeah. And so that's if an engine were looking at it. Um, those are the conclusions the engine would draw. <laughs> uh, it's quite the metaphor, although not entirely apt. I believe Hidechi is still with us. Um, but yeah, I'll attempt to continue this here, I guess. I don't super care, like, what the engine suggests, and, yeah, um, it is of some interest, but perhaps of greater interest is what the players were thinking during the game, so I can kind of give my own thoughts about how this game went. Yeah, clearly this is a mate threat with bishop takes and then this gold drop idea, um, and this is very resourceful, but I think, yeah, I had to stop the mate, which is quite sensible. Maybe I should have sacrificed the silver outright with a pawn drop instead, but I thought they'd just take here and, like, the pawn drop wouldn't do anything. But maybe once this is promoted here and it's a horse, maybe somehow that's better, but I don't think so. So this gold move looks sensible enough. This pawn move drop. Looks maybe a bit slow. And yeah, after that, um, I was unsure really. Like, I could have dropped the rook here or there or here. I mean, there's a lot of places a rook could be dropped. Um, yeah. So we had all that. Um, Engine San would tell us what to think. Um, and yeah, this is also interesting. And like, yeah, I could still consider the pawn drop. I could consider taking the gold directly. I uh, can consider rook drop 3 1. All these things could be considered. Um, yeah, and then I end up getting a bishop. Uh, this is tough for me to figure out. So, yeah, I spent one tempo dropping the rook and another attacking this bishop. Kind of expected them to react differently than what we saw here. This pawn drop, this threatens that now I cannot sack my rook for two, or I cannot exchange my rook for two bishops. So this prevents that possibility, but instead it allows me a bishop in hand, um, and I can still cut off this horse. Um, just let me put this in full screen mode while we're looking at it this way. So here, yeah, since I've cut off this bishop, um, we can take here. 
Well, we've always had that threat. We could take here, although there might be other positions, like maybe this could have been a thing. I don't know. We missed the opening. Like, there's a lot of opening ideas I'm sure both of us missed. Um, but yeah, this sets up... I'm not even sure what this sets up. Um, because... Yeah, I don't have a mate in one here. And I don't seem to have a way to easily set up mate in longer than one. Even with a dragon this close by. I'm just... I guess what I need to aim for is somehow forcing the king upward and then some bishop takes somewhere on the pawn cover. And then hit a one space gap dragon and hope to checkmate the king somewhere. But um, yeah, they defend with a gold general, which at face value seems sensible enough. I take they. I think this might have been where they're suggesting blocking rather than running. Um, and here, like, there's probably something even here. Um, like, sure, there's places I can drop my bishop, but now then the king comes over. So I think I taking the knight's not terrible. Then they play this, and then this is the position transport is asking about. Oh, transport expected me to take the pawn. Let's see here. Okay. Oh. Hello. I thought this was a dragon. So they would sack here and then take my dragon with their horse. Um, yes. This capture of a pawn looks quite appealing. Huh. Oops. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any way for them to make this more complicated here. I. Yeah, if I were in their shoes here, I'm not sure what I would do. They don't have a lance, and even if they did. Now my dragon's no longer wedged between their pawns. So, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we've just collected a pawn for nothing. Um, so unless there's some trick here. Yeah, that's just a pawn. Um, yeah, and this is not the trick we're searching for. So even if arguably maybe that wins a tempo, like this is what I was threatening to do anyway, it was exchange the rook for two bishops. But I don't even have to do that. Captures are optional in Shogi, but I might want to. If I take here, then I'm also threatening to take this gold. Um, though I don't see a mate there. But yeah, potentially if my rook moves away, then they do another pawn drop. So probably I do want to do this exchange here. Yeah, this wasn't really free. Um, yes, yeah, so if this kind of drop happens, then I'm probably exchanging the rook for two bishops. Assuming that's the way this plays out. Um, if I take the gold... Sack the bishop for the silver. So if I take here. Sack the bishop for the silver here. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't show this variation. Sorry. This is what I meant is if I take here and then I'm threatening to take that. Um, but yeah, you're saying if I just straight up take the gold first. Yeah, that could be a problem. Yeah. So this does allow them to force the pace of the play a bit, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure whether I wanted to do this exchange or if I might have had something even better. Like, 
so this silver is protected. Arguably, taking this knight might be my best move here. But maybe not, because maybe this is somehow terrible. Um, that would be wild, wouldn't it? Uh, so, yeah, this is just wild, woolly position. Did anything in particularly strike me as odd here? Um, I know Transport mentioned that the sack is kind of special. Um, yeah, so I played this, and I wasn't sure whether this was... Whether my committing a silver here was a terrible idea. Um, but yeah, it took me a while to settle on retreating my silver instead of bringing up the gold. Maybe these moves, maybe the gold advance might have been safer. Um, that was a fun sack, but yeah, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, Lee Shogi's graph indicates that this was not bad for Gota, right? Gota got some advantage, although I think this is where things started to slow down a lot as I made use of this one rook and then used my other rook. And then uh, this promotion is just too far away, I think. I was afraid some pieces were going to drop by and try to corner my king. But this was not so concerning. Um, anyway, I did this exchange and then threatened to take this gold here. Uh, did you take the lance at this point? They did. And here I was trying to figure out, because I don't see a mate. I was trying to figure out if this is terrible. Um, like, what even happens there? Because, yeah, I've got a bishop drop here, but I don't know that it mates. Instead of the sacrifice, the engine was fond of just moving the rook to 2-6. Okay, so we're not talking about this here. We're talking about this. Yeah, so I think this, uh, yeah, instead of sacrificing the rook, yeah, transport, and you're saying that the engine recommends just bring the rook over, because I've given a free tempo. And yeah, I think the engine's probably right. I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to drop this or just move here. No, it's the same, well... So if I drop this, and hypothetically if this takes and I kick, then this can be used in defense. Um, so this would, could defend directly, even if that's not the best move, this is possible. Whereas if I just defend the knight directly, yeah, there's the promotion idea, but um, you get a tempo to defend this however you want to anyway. So, I mean, maybe even... No, not that. Probably something more like... No, that's not great either. I don't know. During the game, I've been thinking about this. Or that. But... Who knows? But yeah, this... Seems to win a free tempo regardless. If I do something crazy like this, instead of defending the knight... I just don't have a mate threat. So, you could just take here. That might be overly simplifying things, but I don't think so. <laughs> You'd rather attack the bishop so you could drop a pawn in front of the knight, rather than giving me the option of defending it. Rather attack the bishop, so drop a pawn in front of the knight. Oh, I see. So that's how we ended up where we were at the game. Um, 
just that you got to attack the bishop. And that allows you to get the tempo to hit the knight like this. Or I'm sorry, no, you're, t you're still talking about this variation. Um, and you just, in general, like attacking this. Yeah, after my gold defense on 3-9, yeah. Yeah, you'd rather attack the bishops so you can drop a pawn in front of the knight. I've got two knights. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, that makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities here. But one thing stands clear is that I spent one tempo playing the silver out and another tempo on gold 3-9. And yeah, either way, you're going to have this pawn drop and it's going to be really potent. And I have just one bishop attacking. My crazy sacrifice is just unmerited. There's not a need for me to do something so crazy. Um... But that's not how the game went. <laughs> Instead, the game went this way. And yeah, you ran the game past an engine, because this is just immensely complicated to look at. Um, so, I get it. Uh, that's fair. Um, yes, this silver here, transport was recommending that there's a faster mate than what I played in this position. Uh, what could it be? Like, my first thoughts are about knight 7-4. Um... Knight 7-4... Well, the other thought, let me list my candidate moves first before I delve too deep. Knight 7 4, Knight 5 4 are candidates. Dropping a gold on 7 2 is a candidate. Uh, bishop drop 5 1 is a candidate. Um, and maybe even a bishop. No, bishop drop out here is not a candidate. Well, it might be, but they just take here and they can drop a silver, and it's much harder. Um, and I think I could rule out this bishop 5-1, because the can play bit, gold 5-2 takes 5-1, so I can rule that out. I think I could rule out this gold drop, because uh, gold takes... Wait. Okay, gold drop, gold takes... Um... Hmm. Dragon takes, gold takes. No, that ain't it. Um. Hmm. Night seven four was my first thought. Pawn takes. Um, well, another no, another fun idea could be a knight drop all the way back here, threatening to follow up with another knight drop, but that doesn't seem right. Hmm. Thirteen moves. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't rule out gold 7-2. All right. Point number one, gold 7-2, silver takes, silver 7-1 mates. Gold takes, dragon takes, yeah, so. Um, point number two, gold 7-2, gold takes. This is going to be the main line. Um... We don't have a second gold general in hand. <sighs> hmm. 
Um, this is tough. And if every move is check, it's even harder. Because, like, so many times, um, the only check that's even halfway reasonable sacrifices a piece. We just don't have that many pieces to sacrifice here. Um... Yeah, this is... Alright, let's... I don't believe it's anything other than this, but... Let's get this far on the board. This is cheating. Putting the... moving the pieces. Alright, let's go back. Um... So... If it's this, then, like, we'd need to drop a knight next, and then drop the bishop, but then we can't drop another knight. And if we sack to bring the king out, the king escapes. There's not a mate there. If I drop the bishop on 5-1... Then gold takes, dragon takes. That's. If we drop the bishop on 5 1, gold takes. Um, I don't know what else I can take here. I need more pieces. I asked my teammate for more pieces. They say no. Alright, so then what? Um. How in the world? Okay, I'm going to continue cheating by moving pieces. So, if we do this knight check, and then if we continue here, this has not helped my cause. Um... I can continue there. I take. I can take this. Alternatively, we've got like this check, which looks atrocious. This looks even worse. We got this, but then like they're checkmating me probably. Um. There's this threat. Get some dragon sacrifices that are terrible. Um, yeah, let me back up. So instead of randomly sacking pieces, Gold, 7-2. Gold takes. Dragon takes. Okay. Does this work? Um, so this. Um... Hmm. Don't know if this mates. If the king goes this way. Wait, why would the king go this way, though? This bishop drop is probably incorrect. Because of the uh, king moving out to 8-1. Uh, 
and there's not a way to continue there. So it's not this bishop drop, unless I've missed something. Um... But if it's not the bishop drop, it can't be anything else either. Because the king escaping to the center of the board, I'd need like three generals in hand at least to mate that. I don't have three generals. Um, let's back up one. Dragons can take things, but, like, sacking the dragon on 2-1 looks unwise. Um, a bishop drop on 5-1 doesn't look good either. Gold takes, and no matter which of three generals I take, my attack ends. Um... Yeah, no, the, the most destabilizing move is to take this. It just doesn't seem good enough. Um, if I drop a bishop on 8-1, the king escapes. Drop the bishop on 8-3, the king escapes. If I sack the dragon, nothing good comes of that. So it's got to be this check, but this doesn't look like it works. Um, we have a pawn in hand, so maybe that helps us, um, and then we have this promotion, they block, but then this is mate, it's so backing up. If king takes here, then we have this check, and then this is mate. Um, so bishop 6-1, king 8-1 is not an answer. So that brings us back here then. So... I mean, it's got to be bishop takes gold at this point, unless gold 7-2 is a miracle. And maybe it is, but... Um, we take the gold, the king takes. If we drop this gold here, the king can run out toward the center. And we don't have the piece to stop that. Unless we drop the gold on 7-2 first, preventing the king from running, and then we take on 5-2, king takes, then we drop the gold here. Uh, but then they've got the 6-1 square covered with their silver, so that also seems not to work. Um, so... Yeah, there's a mate here somewhere, but gosh. Um, if we drop a knight... And then sack the bishop here, and then try to like lure the king out and use the dragon against it. King still escapes toward the center, and I don't have enough pieces pursuing it. Um, if we take here, and then we check with the dragon, and they block the dragon, I don't have another... I could use a knight. Maybe that's it. We check here. Note if they run back, we have this bishop check again, so they have to take this. Then if we give this check, they can block with any piece of their choosing, and we have a mate for every one of those pieces they can block with. They can't block with a pawn, but you get the idea. Um... So we don't have a silver to force the king to move away. 
but let's say since we have two knights in hand, let's say they block with a knight. Then we check and um, they could take, but then that leads to mate. So instead they run here. Then what? Um, like I've missed something. Clearly this is not it. Um, so let's back up. This bishop takes gold can't be correct, but like everything else seems to fail too. I mean, we could take a second to look at this, but this doesn't look right either. We check here. And then this check. Let's say they block the knight again. Check here. King runs. Uh, we can check here. Now, they didn't have to block pick a knight. They could have picked a bishop. Which would have made it harder for me to attack here. Um, but yeah, as it stands, like if we're just dropping random pieces. Um, oh, I could promote here. Never mind. Um, so I'm not sure if a gold puts up a better fight. Maybe. And then this check. Um... And then if we take, got this. And again, if every move has to be check, like this runs out. So this isn't correct either. So yeah, forcing the silver to move up doesn't seem to make a difference. So a night check out here doesn't seem useful. Ah, the original position. Yeah, let's go back and not cheat so much. Um, yeah, this is the original position. Uh, viewers are hinting this move. In the game, I took the gold on 6-1 and spaced out. <laughs> Did some really terrible follow-up, but managed to win. Um, but yeah, this... Um, uh, you thought the gold sack 7-2 leads to mate here. It seems there is a singular line where Gota survives. That is unfortunate, because this would have made for a beautiful study if there were a forced mate from here. That would be amazing. Even if there's just Hishi from here, that still would be spectacular, because it's so hard to checkmate in Shogi. It really is. Yeah... <laughs> The dragon sack on 6-1 looks... After I played it, I had second thoughts. Uh, it had been a very tense hour leading up to this moment. It felt like an hour. I think it was an hour. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Taking the gold definitely has risks. And <laughs> seems very high risk, potentially low reward. So, other than the fact that we're playing this in front of an audience, and, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait. Yeah, I accidentally found the idea during the game. So, I played this, I played this, I played this. That all looks reasonable. Taking the silver was dumb. Like, consistent would be this. And if 
they move here, then I have this. But, uh, there's stuff to figure out. Wait, no, if they do this drop, I could take here. No, that's not how this works. Oh, this is my longest game ever. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, um, they do this. Then what? Uh... Oh, bishop t4 is better in principle because it opens room for pieces to drop. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, so... Okay. Um... That makes sense. Uh, yeah. If they block with something... Well, yeah, so... Because this is better and makes room for pieces... Well, if I promote with check, that's clearly good for me. So... Yeah. Um... Hmm. All right, so we get a similar line here. And now what? So we've made room for a piece to drop with check on 3-3. Three, three, or we could drop a check on 3-2 and then another check here. Um... This is not anywhere near as easy as I thought it would be during the game. <laughs> uh, if the king runs, take the silver. Probably a knight drop. Yeah. Yeah, having another silver could be quite instrumental here. Uh, if the king runs. I guess we're talking about this run. Anyway, engines are good at solving this sort of thing. Um, perhaps I have much to learn about this. Um, yeah. So, I made this position complex, and if I need an extra silver to mate, rather than sacking the dragon first, I should maybe take this silver if I need it. But then this... I just tilted a little bit, because in the game I thought they were going to play this, and this is going to be a very difficult shape for me to break up. Um, so I was very, very surprised to see the silver drop over here. Uh, even though I thought they might do this, I was still surprised. Um, yeah, so if I need this silver, it's best to take it first. Um, but yeah, then contrarily, if they if taking the silver wins, then they shouldn't have given me it. Um, so yeah, and this yeah, they can't drop the silver here anymore to protect their king, but they're trying to stir up an attack here. Um, yeah, I'm sure, like, uh, our opponent had suggested they show the game through Lee Shogi. And while I wouldn't necessarily trust the opening or middle game evaluations, um, in end games, there's not a whole lot to dispute. Um, so, yes, yeah. Uh, so let's take a Quick look, not at the opening or anything, but the last part of the game. Uh, let's also flip this from my perspective. I'm not going to be able to like play like an engine during a game. But just out of amusement's sake, uh, let's take a quick look at this. So, 
Yeah, this capture apparently is fine. Apparently we're like 30 plus pawns better here, whatever this means. Um, taking the knight was not terrible. The silver drop allows mate in 13, mate in 12, mate in 11, mate in 10, mate in 9. Then best here is dragon takes. Okay, they're not going to block here. No human is going to block, but okay, fine. This bishop check. And this inner position, and then this silver. Wait. Oh, and a rook! I had a rook. I had a rook in hand. I had so many pieces in hand here. Um. So... Yeah, they don't have to give me a gold, but in this line, it's not even used in the mate. So, wow. Okay. So alternatively, the king moves, this check occurs, they block my check. I still have a gold in hand and a silver? Even if they don't give me another? Wait. Am I just really, really bad at counting pieces in hand? Um, okay. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, in that line, there's the, we sack a rook to get a gold. Okay. Let me, why does this feel so disorienting? We sack to get a gold. We drop this gold. We still have a gold in hand. I had a gold in hand at the beginning of the combination, right next to my other two pieces that were in hand, hiding in plain sight. <sighs> okay, I think that was perhaps why I was confused about this. Um, the knights and the gold are very close to each other, and somehow I did not register that this is a gold general. Okay, um, let's see if I can do it, even now that I have the clue of which pieces I have. Um, so we take here, we get a second gold general. They take, we drop, they move the king away. Now, we don't have the silver general in hand yet. We can check from wherever. In general, it's better to check from further away, although there happens to be a closer mate in this case. They can block. Wait, that's not the line. That's not the line at all. The line that was offered by the engine was this check. Now I have the silver in hand. And then this idea of silver and gold checkmate works if we throw this in first. And then we can follow with silver and gold. So we had a gold in hand at the start of the combination. We had to place a gold here to force the king over, which netted us the silver in the combination of the bishop we already had in hand with the silver and the gold that we collected during this combination all allows us a checkmate. That's what's going on here. <laughs> all right, thank you. Uh, have a good night, Shogi Harper. Um, so what made me play Static Rook instead of my usual uh, Central File Rook? Um, wanting to play uh, Static Rook positions a bit more. It's been a while since I've last visited them. And wanting to like provide myself more motivation to study this sort of stuff. Um, so that was what motivated me to try to go this way with it. Uh, and I think we had an exciting game, but um, am I more motivated to study after this? I hope so. Um, oh, interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, since the very beginning, I've been afraid of playing this. 
I mean, at the very, very beginning of playing in this site, I played maybe 5, 10, 15, some number of games like this. And was routinely getting my bishop trapped and my king surrounded and could never figure out where to castle. And then we figured out, hey, if you just play Swinging Rook, you could play Mino Castle every game. And rank up really quickly up the Q ranks, just playing a decent castle, building an attack, using all the pieces, and... You know, you've got a castle. How bad can it be? And then we discovered Central File Rook, where uh, it just divides the board in half. So you don't have to pay attention to... Um, you can reason about each half of the board separately, because there's not a whole lot of crossover. Um, but in the cases where there are crossover, it really surprises the opponent, too. Um <laughs> yeah, nobody forced you to go take the side pawn. I might have heavily incentivized you to do this by my, like, playing this silver wall. This gives you definite reasons to try this. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. A silver wall, who knows? It might have been just the move for this game, and no other game ever. But, yeah. Um, I exchanged bishops here. It occurs to me now, I could just play that instead. And this is another line, no doubt, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Feels like it's a line. Probably doesn't do a whole lot. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, it makes it difficult for the rook to go back here, so... Ah, <sighs> Shogi is complicated. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably what I was looking for. Um, but instead I exchanged the bishops, and we had a roller coaster of a game. Um, ultimately resulting here. Yeah, engines will say exactly what transpired here, but after I take the silver, just how bad was that? Didn't throw the game. Okay. Unlike many of my other blunders, this this loses the force checkmate if they respond perfectly. Uh, yes, yeah, so if they play this rook 2-9 to try to shore up their king and scare the hell out of me. Apparently I survived this. Uh, but, yeah, it's a long game. <laughs> Or at least it feels like a long game. Wow, that's a cool night drop. Yeah, they we just keep building up pieces here. I take a lance. And they attack my king from both directions. And then we drop this. And, yeah. Uh, this, this is a cluster. It's fun. <laughs> um... Oh, color is reversed. Yeah, no, uh, you're referring to the opening. Yep. All right. So, how do we summarize this game? We played an opening to try to motivate ourselves to study it further, because we have had a little bit of study a very long time ago about this. Um. We've seen other people play such variations, and we thought, hey, wouldn't it be great if we were to play this? And we played into this line where I played Silver Wall, and, uh, you know, this, this is exciting. The rating stakes were a bit curious, too, because uh, here they are playing for one rating point, so unfortunately... Had they won this, that still wouldn't have promoted them. You, one could argue that maybe somehow this uh, rating system could be refined a bit further to accommodate such things, but anyhow, um, yeah, this is a sharp game. And yeah, I think it probably drills into us better discipline with time management, even though Throughout the game, I was spending my time until toward the end where I just, like, flipped out. 
So I should do something about that if I want to compete as best as I can. Um, Shogi Harbor uh, recommended that this sort of thing dropping further away gives you room to drop additional pieces to join the attack. Uh, yeah, I had dropped this closer because I thought there might be some line where I'd need to promote it onto two, but um, that's that was just very wishful thinking on my part. And yeah, clearly we have enough pieces already. Or if we don't, before we sack the dragon, we should exchange the correct things. So, uh, yeah, this is exciting. Um, in their position, I don't know that I would have played this. I know this is what I expected, but it's really demoralizing to have to put all your pieces around your king. Because then the next question becomes, okay, how am I attacking next? And it's just very rough trying to play this way. So even though I thought this might happen, um, you know, I've, even though I was quite surprised to see the silver drop here, I think the silver drop here might have been the best human try. Even if engines can work their way through this endgame with ease, yeah, this got pretty dicey. So, yeah, this was a good fun game. Let's see, what was the... Wait, oh. Yeah, Twitch blocks some words. Sorry about that. Anyway, yeah, this is a sharp game. Hope we enjoyed this. And we got another teaching ladder game this weekend. Then next weekend will be week 100. So look forward to that.